Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. If you are um, a new participant or a former participant, we are so happy you are here tonight um, for our webinar series, New Orleans Music and Art in Special Education. So tonight we will be discussing music and mindfulness with New Orleans rhythm and blues. Before we get started, let me just go over a few of the Zoom features and then we have a lot of fun learning and activities and live music tonight. So first, if first we'd like you to mute your microphone um, during the webinar and there will be opportunities for you to unmute and engage with the audience. Um, but for now, let's stay muted. You are welcome to turn your video on and say hi to your peers who are here to learn with you today. You can chat. We'll be doing some engaging um, through the chat box to learn and participate in some of the activities. There's also an option for live transcript. And you can expand your screen if you are on a laptop or desktop computer. All right, so tonight I'm gonna to be helping facilitate this evening's event. My name is Jody Scissors. I am a Caucasian woman of Northern European descent. I have long brown wavy hair. I'm wearing black rimmed glasses and you can see some abstract art in the background. So let's take a chance to get to know um, everybody that's here tonight to help uh, to learn with us about mindfulness and music. So for just a moment, if everybody could just turn their mic or their cameras on and say hello, uh, we'd like to see your faces and see who has joined us tonight. Go ahead and give a wave. All right, so we're gonna do some stage introductions. Uh, we're gonna use a chat box for this feature. Um, I'd like to know tonight who is with us, what city you represent, and what is your feel good song? So, like I said, my name is Jody. Some call me Jojo or Joe. I'm from Washington, DC, and I love classic soul music. So my feel good song is Stop in the Name of Love, and that is the song my mom and I used to sing and dance to in the kitchen and I can't stop now that I'm adult. So in the chat box, uh, let's hear your feel good song. Go ahead and engage and share uh, with your peers. All right, I see walking on sunshine. The way you make me feel, nice. Sunshine of my life, great. <laughs> Oh, Beyonce. <laughs> Stevie Wonder Sunshine of my life. Hey, we've got some uh, connections here. This is awesome. Keep your head up. Oh, we've got a pre Preservation Hall Jazz Band Jam. Nice. It's such a pleasure to have everyone here this evening. Great, okay. So let me get started with our panelists tonight and do um, some stage introductions for them. So tonight, please meet Laura Cicignano. She is our ASL interpreter. And if you would like to pin her, you can use the little pin feature button on uh, Zoom and she will be doing our ASL interpretation tonight. And this evening's panelists for Music and Mindfulness with New Orleans Rhythm and Blues, we have Ashley Bell, a school counselor, professional development leader. Uh, we have Will Smith, who is a special education teacher as well as a trumpeter at Preservation Hall, and Meredith Sharp, a neurologic music therapist. So tonight they have a lot of great content. Uh, there's a lot to learn and so many takeaways, and I'm excited for you to, to join tonight, and um, let's get started. Hi, everyone. My name is Will Smith. 
I'm an African-American male. I have on a red shirt and I'm seated in the bandstand of Preservation Hall. What you see now is a expression of what mindfulness brings you to in the hall. It's a joyful kind of celebration. And what you see is people reacting to how the music makes them feel. It's also not just a, a type of music that's celebrated inside, but in New Orleans, we take the music wherever we go. So you also see images of the brass band playing New Orleans music in the street. And so a bit of what mindfulness is to us is the joy that the music brings. Tonight's agenda will include music and mindfulness, an experimental with zoning songs, expressing emotions through music, experiential articulating feelings, resources and strategies, and then we'll end up with a Q&A. So now I think that Ashley is gonna to talk to us a bit. Yes, hi, good evening. About what mindfulness is. Good evening, my name is Ashley Bell. I'm a black female. I'm wearing a navy and yellow striped tank top. My hair is dark brown and in a bun and I have on black rimmed glasses. So before we really delve into the relationship between music and mindfulness, I first wanna talk a bit about what mindfulness is. I love how Will showed us a picture of people dancing and having a good time because mindfulness is not just about, you know, meditating or being still and quiet. That's not always what mindfulness is about. It's really about just being fully aware and present in the moment. And so that's going to look different depending on where you are. It's just about being aware of what's going on around you, being fully engaged in the moment, and just making sure that you're paying attention to all the different kind of senses that you're tapping into in that moment. So implementing mindfulness in the classroom is an awesome tool. There's a lot of different benefits to implementing mindfulness. And these are just a few. These are kind of the main benefits with mindfulness and children, especially children who have disabilities. Um, these are some different kind of outcomes that I've noticed from working with students, um, all students and specifically students with disabilities, since they do tend to struggle with some of these different skills. Um, being mindful helps students to maintain calm and focused, to manage their emotions, to be more flexible and empathetic, to practice self-awareness around their thoughts and emotions, and to manage challenges more skillfully and recover from upsets more quickly. And so when we talk about just being in the classroom and availability for learning, it's really important to maintain some sense of calm and focus and to be able to manage some of the different emotions that might arise throughout your school day. Um, flexibility and empathy are really important skills to have when you're in the school setting because you're often working with other people, other adults, other children. Um, it's really important that students practice self-awareness. We'll get a little bit more into the different social emotional learning domains, but self-awareness is one of them. And helping to teach students how to practice self-awareness is really important and helping them be in tune with their thoughts and emotions. And finally, managing challenges more skillfully and recovering from upsets more quickly is um, a really monumental skill. There's all sorts of things that can happen throughout the day. And it's important that children are able to kind of recenter, refocus and still be able to recover and go on with their day, no matter what may happen throughout the course of the time they're there. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Meredith Sharp. I am a Caucasian woman from Northern European descent. I'm wearing a navy blue shirt with yellow flowers, glasses, and my hair is pulled back in a bun. My Zoom background is the inside of Preservation Hall. I'm a neurologic music therapist and owner of Sharp Notes Music Therapy. I've been practicing now for about 11 years and I love working to facilitate music groups in various school settings. So as we move on, we're gonna look at how does music lead us into this present um, and greater self-awareness that Ashley just spoke about. 
In a study done by psychologists and music psychologists from Germany and the United States, the question of why people listen to music was posed. And their research published in 2013 cited that one of the discovered current day reasons is to achieve self-awareness. So how does music bring greater self-awareness and how does it bring us into that present moment to achieve greater self-awareness? So first, music is a whole body experience. We feel its vibrations and sound qualities through sensations in our bodies. We may feel goosebumps as we listen to a certain song or the de desire to move as a particular rhythm stimulates motor response in our brain. In fact, when we listen to or engage in music making, many areas of our brain are stimulated and activated connecting with our bodies. As an active and creative experience, music brings us into the moment because it is unfolding in the moment. And when we actively listen to or make music, we're engaging with the space around us at that particular time. So as a result, we may become aware of different sensations in our bodies, emotions we are feeling, thoughts we are contemplating, or actions we are automatically performing. And at the same time, the experience of actively engaging with music may bring a memory to the present. And then the re-experience of this memory in the moment can often uncover a new level of awareness. A fascinating aspect of listening to music is that it has an effect on our minds and bodies before we are even consciously aware of the music itself. This is why you may automatically find yourself tapping your foot to the beat of a song without realizing it or the emotional qualities of a song create sensations in your body, but you have no idea what the lyrics just said. All of the musical elements relate to how we are in the world. Rhythm can be felt both internally and externally. Our hearts beat in a rhythm, we breathe in rhythm, we walk in a rhythm, we speak in rhythm. On a good day, when we are feeling on top of everything, we might feel that our internal rhythm is steady and consistent. On a different day, when we have been thrown by unexpected circumstances, we may feel our internal rhythm as unsteady or even chaotic. Certain melodies and tones within music connect with different emotions we feel and lyrics of a song may convey thoughts and beliefs that we have. When we feel particularly tired, our tempo of being may be described as slow, but when we're feeling excited, our tempo of being may be a bit faster. All of these elements of music connect with us, and this connection allows for greater self-awareness through musical experiences. Finally, because of the mind and body experiences through music, music can be integrative, helping us feel more connected to ourselves, others, and our world. Because we are all unique individuals, the experience of music is unique and individual. As a group listens to a song together, each person will feel something different, think something different, attend to different musical components, and become aware of something different in the moment. So when music brings this greater self-awareness, it then brings, and you can see at the bottom here, a greater sense of control. And when we feel this greater sense of control, we can more accurately identify what we are feeling and turn to healthy forms of expression. So Ashley will now elaborate on how we can help our students through this process. So I'm now going to introduce a, um, a program called the Zones of Regulation. This is a program that I absolutely love and something that I actually piloted and then rolled out full fledged at an elementary school that I served as the school counselor in. And it really had just monumental effects on our students. The Zones of Regulation is a systematic cognitive behavioral approach used to teach self-regulation skills. So in other words, it's a program that helps students learn how to tie their thoughts to their feelings to their actions because this is a skill this isn't something that is automatic for many people and particularly students who have disabilities and so what's beautiful about this program is that it teaches them the steps and the skills to be able to control their thoughts that then tie to their emotions and feelings and then also the actions that manifest as a result 
And so the zones of regulation categorizes the different ways we feel or our different states of awareness into four concrete zones. And each zone is tied to a specific color, which I'll talk a bit more about in a moment. Um, ultimately, the zones of regulation provide strategies to teach students to become more aware of and independent and controlling their emotions and impulses, managing their sensory needs, and improving their ability to problem solve conflicts. You've heard a lot already that we've used this term awareness because mindfulness is all about being fully aware and present in the moment. However, depending on what situation may be unfolding around us, it's not always automatic to become fully aware and present in the moment. And sometimes we need some tools and some strategies to get there. And so the zones of regulation is a great way to do this. Now I'm going to briefly introduce and talk about the zones of regulation, but if this is a program that really interests you, you can certainly visit the zones of regulation website, which has tons of information and resources. And that website will be linked in the chat. It's um, zonesofregulation.com. So these are the four zones. Um, when we talk about the zones of regulation, the green zone, the blue zone, the yellow zone, and the red zone. Typically when I'm introducing this concept to particularly elementary school students, I always like to talk about, well, when you see these colors, what do you think of? And they'll say, oh, a traffic light. And then we start to talk about what the different colors of a traffic light mean. Um, we talk about how green means go, yellow means slow down, and red means stop. And then they always say, well, what about the blue? And then we kind of just say, well, that's just an extra that we're, it's a bonus that we're throwing in there. But it's a really similar concept. Um, in a nutshell, the green zone means that you're focused and you're ready to learn. Whenever I refer to the green zone to my students, they always know that means I'm ready to learn. Green means go. The blue zone means you're not quite feeling like yourself. So that could be that you're feeling tired. It could be that you're feeling sad. It could mean that you're feeling bored or maybe just not as engaged as you typically would be. The yellow zone is where you're starting to feel a, a loss of control and an urge to start to be a bit impulsive and to act without thinking. Now that could be from anxiety or frustration, but that could also be from just excitement. Maybe something really awesome is happening around you or happening in class or something silly just happened with a classmate. And so now you're starting to feel some loss of control, maybe have the wiggles or the giggles. Um, so the yellow zone is kind of twofold. And then the red zone is just total loss of control. You're just doing whatever it is that you feel, you're solely acting on impulse, you're maybe losing a bit of rationality and really just um, responding to your emotions. So I have some different categories here and I think that these different categories can be used depending on the level that you're working with. Um, when we talk about elementary school students, particularly K through two, they tend to not know a whole lot of words and so pictures obviously work best. And so they love emojis. And so when I introduce this to K through two, I would say, I like to use pictures of expressions. So a happy face for the green zone, kind of a down tired face for the blue zone, um, kind of a bit of like a jittery or silly face for yellow, and then an angry face for the red zone. Um, another sort of technique that I use to introduce the zones of regulation to elementary age students and even middle school students would be a number system. The whole purpose of zoning emotions and feelings to four simple colors is that they're easy to identify in the moment, no matter which zone you may be in. Sometimes when you're not feeling totally in control of yourself or you're just not feeling like you're in the green zone, for example, it can be hard to articulate exactly what's going on, but Research has shown that it is easy to at least identify a color, or in this case, a number, to kind of give whoever it is that's working with you an idea of what space you may be in. And so the green zone is like a one or a two, low level, and then it kind of goes all the way up to an eight to a 10, which is the red zone, where we're in that loss of control and really starting to make choices that we may not want to make that are tied strictly to our emotions. Another concept that you can use for the zones of regulation for older students would be weather. So as you can see here in the green zone, I have a nice calm sunny day. In the blue zone, I have like a wet ground with an umbrella. So sort of that rainy gloomy day. And typically when it's like that outside, our emotions and feelings kind of match that. And we do feel a little bit blue. In the yellow zone, I have um, a storm that's sort of brewing, kind of right before the storm hits where it's a little bit windy, a little bit rainy, a little crazy. 
And then finally, I have just a really bad storm, which is the red zone where things are kind of out of control. Um, for particularly maybe high school students and even some more mature, older middle school students, you can also talk about music. Now, these different categories that I've listed are just what zones resonate for me, but this is definitely fluid and it definitely depends on what sort of music you enjoy um, as far as which type of music you would tie to a zone. For me, pop alternative tends to be more upbeat and that's the green zone. Rhythm and blues or some of that more melancholy classical um, kind of makes me think of the blue zone. The yellow zone, I think of that really um, upbeat music with a lot of bass, house or electronic music that's really, really up tempo. And then finally for the red zone, I think of like, you know, super heavy metal or rock. Well, that was ultra interesting. And I'm sure we've all experienced, students experience this type of sensory output and need some type of help to self-regulate. So now having talked about the zoning, let's think about how songs make you feel and what zones you might think a song would place you, you would place a song in. We're gonna start by listening to a song from the legendary Fats Domino, a song called Blue Monday. everyone to take a minute after listening to that selection and kind of tune in to your your mind your body and we'd like to ask you to contribute in the chat um how did that song make you feel if a word comes to mind and then what zone would you place that song in and you can see the color the color zones what color would you designate for that song for you and we'd love to hear your thoughts and answers in the chat uh, so we have some different answers. So green and blue, um, the team felt pretty upbeat, certainly not blue for me. I felt blue then green and then back to blue. Certainly can happen as music unfolds. The words are bluish, but the feeling of the music is green. Great point. Blue Monday, yes. Made me feel blue, a little back and forth, green. And that's a great point that we're going to get into a little bit more some you know the music the components of music itself and then the lyrics and and those differences and when there's similarities and then differences great thank you everyone so much for contributing to that so we're going to go on to our second uh, music selection which i believe pam is going to introduce for us yes hi my name is Pam Blackman. I'm with the Preservation Hall Foundation. I'm an African-American female, and I have a pretty blue and purple scarf tied around my head. And as we kind of keep in mind what we just learned about the different color zones, this next live listening session coming to you from Preservation Hall, think about it and think about where you would place this next song called The Whippin' Blues. And we will have Mr. Craig Klein on trombone, Mr. Bruce Brackman on clarinet, Mr. Joe Lasty on drums, Mr. Ronnell Johnson on the sousaphone, and Mr. Bruce 
deserves a round of applause. Beautiful performance. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Yeah, so I see people in the chat were already starting to respond. Um, lots of greens, uh, green with maybe a hint of yellow. Is there a feeling higher than green? I was thinking some yellow too. Uh, definitely makes me want to get up and move around. Yes, yellow, green, so exciting and upbeat. Yellow, the urge to act without thinking. Great points. Yes. Excellent. So we can really see how um, different music can really match with different zones. And, and even in this comparison to live music versus recorded music. So something to think about as we're uh, working with our students as well. Thank you all so much for contributing your thoughts. Okay. So now that we've learned and experienced how music can facilitate mindfulness and help us identify what we're feeling, let's look at how music can serve as a healthy expression of our emotions. And first, let's take a look at the research. So when the brain receives information from the environment, it first assesses this information to see if it is useful. The brain also assesses if the incoming information is safe or dangerous because we as humans want to feel safe and we need to feel safe before performing more complex cognitive tasks. Because music stimulates and accesses areas of the brain that help us perceive how we feel, music can help us feel safe. Music also has direct access to the limbic system, the emotional center of our brain. This can be especially important for us to know because when we ask our students with or without disabilities to perform cognitive tasks and learning, we need to help them feel safe and music can be a great tool. So as we dive into the connection between music and emotion, several theories have been presented over the years and perhaps there's a little bit of truth in each one. One theory poses that music sounds to us the way we feel an emotion internally. So when I'm scared, my heart might be racing, my stomach may feel a little queasy. So perhaps music that is racing and unpredictable harmonically can convey the same feeling. Other theories suggest that we feel emotion in music because the musical elements match the vocal inflections of verbally expressed emotions or the physical gesture of an emotion. So can the shaking of a fist in anger be conveyed through the strong, loud strike of a drum. Perhaps the most important point to consider as we look at music and emotional expression is the influence of each person's musical culture and background. Countries and cultures around the world all have their own unique forms of music with their own scales, intervals, and harmonic structures. Different rhythmic patterns are utilized and various instruments are popular in different regions. When we're born and as we grow, we hear and listen to the music of our culture and families. 
We become accustomed to these musical qualities and make emotional associations with them. As a result, music that sounds sad to one person may not sound sad at all to another from another country or culture. This is very important for us to consider as we use music for emotional expression with our students. We need to be careful not to make assumptions about how another person is perceiving or relating to a particular musical selection. So when we think about ways to use music for emotional expression, we can examine three main points that tie the research together. First, studies have shown that music can make us feel certain emotions. This is unique to each person because of our individual preferences and backgrounds as previously described, but there are also shared emotional experiences and trends with certain songs or styles of music within a culture. There's a reason certain songs or styles are played at weddings versus funerals, sporting events versus spas, for example. Second, the music we choose can resonate with how we are feeling. Studies have revealed and perhaps personal experience has showed us that when we feel sad, we don't necessarily want to listen to a happy song. Instead, we might select a sad song because it resonates and validates how we're feeling, further helping us to not feel so alone or isolated. This sense of comfort can then help us transition out of sadness. On the flip side, studies have also revealed that some people need a happier song to help them let go of their sadness and not dive deeper into it. Again, very personal uh, experience there. Lastly, when we can create the music we need for emotional expression. There are times when we cannot find the words to express how we feel, and in many cases, our students with disabilities are unable to use words and express how they feel. So because of all the things we have learned, music is a whole body experience. It brings self-awareness and directly accesses emotional centers. It can be an amazing tool to express exactly what we are feeling in a healthy way. Making the music we feel with all of its components integrates the mind and body while encompassing the full range of what we are feeling. So Ashley will now take us through a deeper examination of using music for social emotional learning with our students. So forms of expression, so articulating feelings, and we love using this word, capitalizing the word art, because even though we are literally articulating our feelings, we're using different art forms to do that. So this is going to kind of give you some specific examples of how we can use art to facilitate self-regulation. What's awesome about using art as a form of facilitating self-regulation is that oftentimes when you give a student a task, they have to stop and think about what that task is. And just that little flip of a switch is enough to bring them out of the red zone and move them closer to that state of awareness and presence that is mindfulness. Some different examples of art would be writing, movement, art, and improv improvisation. So for writing, it's the physical process of writing that puts focus on the present moment and encourages the use of creative intelligence. Writing can be a really cathartic experience for students. Oftentimes when students have experienced something and they don't know how to deal with it in the moment, they just want to get it out and express it. And sometimes they don't know how to get that out and express it in a productive way or even a respectful way, especially to the other person who may have been involved or contribute to whatever feelings they might have. And so writing is a great way to channel some of that energy and allow students to have that energy output that they need in order to move to a state of awareness and a state of presence in the moment. And it helps them to just process some of the different experiences and emotions that they're dealing with. Movement um, also allows you to be in tune with your body. Um, our body also has a lot of different reactions to the feelings that we may be having. Sometimes our heart is racing. Sometimes we're sweating. Sometimes um, our hands are feeling a little bit clammy. Sometimes we may even feel a little bit nauseous. There's all sorts of um, examples where students will have those kind of somatic symptoms when they're dealing with something. And so moving your body around a little bit can kind of help sort through that. So just raising awareness of what um, sensations the movement creates. Some examples of that could be dancing, it could be exercise, it could be yoga, it could be walking. I know that um, something that's kind of popular now is giving students 
movement breaks and brain breaks, particularly younger students who are in elementary school. And this is also a part of self-regulation. They have energy that's kind of brewing up inside of them from sitting and learning. And so giving them the space to be able to express that energy often helps them to self-regulate and brings them back into that green zone that we talked about where they have the readiness to learn. The process of expressing thoughts and feelings to direct the art creation process is also a way that students can articulate their feelings. They may not wanna write, they may not wanna move, they may wanna do something like drawing, coloring, really like those adult coloring pages are awesome because they're really intricate and they do require a lot of concentration. Scribbling, painting, or just even creating some sort of music. Um, just a, an example, could be maybe when a student is feeling really amped up, maybe in that yellow zone approaching red or maybe in the red zone. Sometimes what I would do with my students is just give them a coloring page and some coloring materials. And I would say, it looks like you need a few moments. Why don't you just work on that? And then when you're ready to talk, we can do that. And so just being able to have something to channel the energy into that's creative is enough to start that self-regulation process. And finally, when we talk about improv, that's the process of the mind and body working in unison to produce a new creation. That's a bit more spontaneous. Um, that could be spontaneous movement, music, using your body as an instrument. So maybe playing the drums in your legs, snapping, clapping, humming, um, or some sort of drama, um, making you know funny noises, silly faces, different things like that. These are all just some different creative ways that students can self-regulate, express their emotions, process what they're feeling in a way that is personalized to them. So mindfulness music and social emotional learning. Um, social emotional learning is something that is really on the rise and gaining traction in schools all over. Um, as a school counselor, a mental health professional, I believe that social emotional learning social emotional skills and competencies are just as important as those different academic skills that we want our students to acquire throughout their time in school. And so when we talk about social emotional learning, there are five domains, self-management, self-awareness, responsible decision-making, relationship skills, and social awareness. Um, to be frank, all of these different domains are tapped into when we talk about mindfulness, self-regulation, um, and music but I wanna draw our attention to two specific domains, which, be, which would be self-awareness and social awareness. So again, that idea of awareness and being present, um, being kind of at the forefront of mindfulness. So music, specifically lyrics, titles, melodies, they can facilitate self-awareness within students by articulating what students can't. Sometimes you know you're feeling something, but you can't quite put it into words. And so listening to a song that really helps you tap into what you're feeling, whether it be, wow, the, the rhythm, the beat, the pace of this music is really reflective of what I'm feeling right now. Or wow, those lyrics really explain exactly what I'm going through. That's a way for students to be able to tap into exactly what it is that they're feeling. When we talk about social awareness, finding music that students can connect to through words or melodies or rhythms can create a sense of connectedness to the world around them. And so what I love about music also is that it teaches and shows students that there's other people around them and outside of them that experience some of the same feelings and emotions that they do. And social awareness is all about showing understanding and empathy for others. And part of that and a step toward that is a sense of connectedness. And so music is one of those um, things that really bring people together, it helps people connect, and it really helps people tap into their feelings and share some common experiences through music. And we saw that when we talked about feel good songs, there were a couple of participants who had that same feel good song, which was awesome. Also, when we listened to the music and identified the different zones, some of us had differing zones and some of us had the same zones. So that's another interesting part when we talk about mindfulness and music is that it can also help to build up our social awareness skill sets as well. Next, we're going to move into another experiential where we're going to revisit the idea of articulating our feelings. Yes, so we're gonna go ahead and listen to the, the same music selections we did before, the first one being Blue Monday, but this time, 
we'd like to ask you um, if you can, you know, grab a piece of paper if you have it uh, nearby, maybe um, a pen or some markers or a pencil or crayons or uh, something like that. And we invite you as you're listening this time to um, to experience one of these uh, forms of art and expressing what you're feeling while you're listening. So this could be uh, writing down some words that come to mind as in poetry or kind of journaling. It could be drawing, it could be coloring, um, even you know, scribbling. Or if you feel uh, more comfortable, maybe just noticing how your body maybe wants to move as you're listening to the music. Um, you know, maybe you find yourself kind of tapping along your own form of improvisation with the music. So any way you feel comfortable um, through art, uh, we'd like for you to uh, do that as we listen to our music selection. So here's the first one, Blue Monday. Thank you, everyone. So we now like to um, invite everyone to share for a moment about that experience. If you want to um, write in the chat or if you feel comfortable, uh, please unmute. If you uh, want to show uh, your video, you certainly can and share or you can share through the chat as well. We'd love to hear what came to mind for you or what you how it was to create while listening. I know Ashley shared the actual music makes me want to tap along, but the lyrics urge me to think about my week ahead. Yes. Improvising, I was tapping and bouncing. Music invites me to take a break from my work and relax. Yeah. Definitely couldn't stop tapping, yeah. Same, yes, I felt my body swing. I actually drew a picture of um, myself kind of dancing in the rain. <laughs> swaying and thinking about it. Yeah, I can imagine writing a remix to lyrics of my work week. Yeah, definitely. A rhythm that coincides with walking, yes, great. Wonderful. So now we're going to move on to the second music selection and Jody is going to stop the presentation so that we can fully see the ensemble.
Wonderful. Another round of applause. Beautiful. Thank you so, so much. So we want to invite you again to share uh, what sort of art form you enjoyed expressing through uh, during that experience. Um, what did you feel? I saw several people commented, want to dance. Um, makes you want to let go and dance and move. Y'all done it. I found myself wanting to color just like lots of colors all over, right? Just lots of colors there. I can imagine going for a run with this song. Yes, getting all my bad energy out. It makes me want to move. Yeah. Beautiful folk art with acrylic paints. Yes, yeah. Great. Thank you so much, everyone, for sharing. So now we'd like to hear your ideas. We've shared a lot of information. Um, and so now we invite you to share how you might implement a music and mindfulness experience in your class. That certainly doesn't have to be limited to some of the things that we talked about today. But just keeping in mind the information we've shared about the relationship between music, mindfulness, um, self-awareness, and self-regulation. What do you see maybe being an experience that your students may enjoy? Feel free to unmute yourself and share, or feel free to write your idea in the chat. So I see um, typically engineering students and that mindfulness is something that those students tend to struggle with often. Um, playing soft music at the beginning of the day is a great way to set the tone for a productive, great day, certainly. Um, I think my students would like the choice of expression, definitely. There's a lot of room for personalization, which is awesome. Um, we know that students tend to buy in more to things when they have choice. Um, so I think that that's a, a great point. Getting people to stop and think before acting is maybe the hardest thing, definitely. And so that's why we love the whole idea of articulating feelings, because sometimes when um, a student is in the moment and being a little bit impulsive, giving them a task that's easy, but still allows them to, doesn't ignore what they're experiencing and allows them to still output the energy can really help redirect and be a step toward self-regulating and making better choices and being in a calmer state um, for processing those feelings. Yes, the choice of expression really be impactful for their self-confidence as well, totally. Um, allowing students to kind of tap into who they are and how they feel. And um, I think students love when there's no right or wrong answer and it's all about just you and, and what, what you feel and what you think. Great point, yeah. And if we can adopt this process as adults, we can transfer it to young adults and children, totally. Um, using just um, zones of regulation language has been really helpful. Sometimes instead of expressing how I'm feeling using words, I try to use colors or a number system. So these are just some ideas that we have. If you're still kind of grappling with this whole idea and not sure where to start, these are some really simple ways that you can create a music and mindfulness experience in your classroom. The first one is called a pulse check. I love doing pulse checks. Um, school can be very all about business. And sometimes I think students appreciate when they have a chance to, to just be and express how they might be feeling and how their day is going. So maybe something, a, a warm up activity or a do now before you even start your day is asking students to pick a song that describes how they feel in that current moment and have them share out. That can give you a lot of insight into how your class is feeling and help you take the temperature of the room. And it also helps students connect with one another. So that whole idea of those SEL domains, um, social awareness, relationship building even, um, so we love that as a, a nice and simple activity to kind of dip your toe in the water of music and mindfulness. For articulate, this is another really simple, great activity. You can do this, you know, mid lesson if you can tell that your class is feeling a little bit antsy. Um, I know someone mentioned in the chat that their engineering students kind of struggle to be present and in the moment. So maybe a stop, drop and articulate can be really helpful. Just playing a song and having students express their feelings through an art form. is kind of just, um, it's kind of a mindless um, task. And that's what mindfulness is all about. Just being present, aware and focused on one thing. And then also just creating. 
So um, that kind of takes that articulating a step further. So making music with an instrument or a tool, um, using body percussion or humming is really nice. Also, that's certainly something that you can do in a music class. Um, and it's definitely something that you can do with younger students. If you have some sort of like class meeting time or something like that, that's a great way to allow students to creatively express what they may be feeling. So we'd like to ask you all now to, to take an action step. And um, the next step would be implement a music and mindfulness experience for your class. And uh, we have a great resource for you that um, highlights the three ideas that Ashley just spoke about on the Preservation Hall website. And I'm gonna let Jody introduce that and tell you where you can find it. Meredith, thank you panelists, that was really really awesome, um, enjoyed every minute. So yeah, if, if you wanna go over and check out um, the Preservation Hall lessons, Blue Monday has some adaptations that you saw in this webinar. Um, they were developed by Meredith and Ashley and actually Davis Rogan, who he is the writer of Blue Monday and he is here present in the webinar today. So uh, we're gonna push through now to the Q&A, um, but just wanna let you know that we have two other uh, webinars coming up in June and July, so please keep an eye out for those, uh, the communication on that. We'd love to see you join us again. All right, so um, let's uh, start our Q&A. You can turn on your mic or you can, uh, you know, ask a question in the chat and our panelists will try to answer them as best as they can. And if they don't know the answer, we will research it and we will email you the answer. So we will do our best. So go ahead and, and let's take some questions. Any questions out there? <laughs> I have one. So um, I was just wondering, Ashley, you've worked with older students. So how do you get older students to buy in and engage in mindfulness practices? Um, I think that older students really love the whole idea of mindfulness. Um, older students tend to really like body movement. So yoga is something that they really enjoy. Meditating is something they really enjoy. Um, all students love music and love an opportunity to listen to music. So even just playing music that kind of elicits that feeling of calmness. I love how Meredith earlier talked about like music you may play in a spa. Um, and so when I'm thinking about, I keep going back to like these engineering students maybe even just when they're working on um, independent work, playing music that is just a little bit more calm and focused can help them be a bit more mindful and um, center them a little bit. And so um, I think that older students tend to really like to work with music, um, body movement. And I definitely think that they like the idea of being able to um, express their feelings and emotions in a creative way, such as choosing a song, um, or explaining certain lyrics that resonate with them. I think that's something that they really enjoy. I know a lot of some older students I work with too really enjoy while they're listening to music, um, like uh, molding clay or it's a very tactile experience. And so um, I've noticed that a lot of my older students I work with enjoy that experience as well. It's a little bit more physical um and creating things out of the molding clay can also uh, be very therapeutic looks like there's a, a question in the chat it says do you have video samples of some of these activities unfolding in a classroom it's a great question <laughs> so um i will say that um, in the elementary school where I served as a school counselor, we would have different um, school-wide mindfulness experiences. And we do have um, some videos from those experiences that I can share. Um, just tapping into the idea of mindfulness in music, um, meditation, body movement, different things like that. And so um, that's definitely something that I can share so that you can see it in real time. It's not necessarily a classroom, it's a lot more students but um, the concept is definitely still there. And it's really amazing to see students, um, you know, as young as kindergarten or first grade, um, you know, meditating or doing sort of different mindfulness tasks or just responding in different ways to music. Great, and I was gonna say, um, so Ashley can share those resources with us and we can add those to the blog and, and you can access and watch those uh, when that is ready to go. 
it looks like Daniel says that engineers often struggle to connect with emotion and cognitive thinking, and this hour has given him some new ideas. That's awesome. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I did have one more follow-up to the, to the question about high school students. Do you ever let them use personal devices to connect, to, you know, tap into a song? Um, is there any use of, of technology that they bring themselves that you allow them to use? Absolutely. Um, when I was a middle school teacher also, um, something that I always allowed my students to do in the classroom was um, to be able to use headphones to listen to music. Sometimes um, my students that really struggled to focus and concentrate, particularly students that had um, a diagnosis of maybe like ADHD or ADD, for example, being able to play music and had headphones that kind of cancel out everything around them really allowed them to tap in and be mindful. Um, also, sometimes when those students would be feeling a little bit in that yellow zone, um, not totally in control of themselves and feeling a little bit antsy, playing some classical music used to be really helpful for them. And you could just kind of see the calm take over. So I definitely think um, playing a music aloud for your class is awesome. But this is also really about personalization. And so um, if it's something that you're open to and that you feel your students could do responsibly. I think also allowing students to use headphones and play whatever music works for them and get them into the green zone can be really awesome too. And I know older students really tend to appreciate having um, that freedom. There's also too, if your students have access to an individual iPad or tablet, there's some really neat apps out there that um, will combine, say, like drawing on the tablet while they're listening or um, creating different art forms on the tablet themselves. And some students really respond uh, to the tablet even more so than, say, coloring or coloring pages. It, again, as Ashley said, it totally depends on the student. So having that option um, can be really effective. And also, it actually made me think um, of another student who kind of really needed to do things always with like his hand. So even giving students like different sorts of kind of puzzles, like a Rubik's cube or an actual puzzle itself, giving them something that really requires some thinking um, while also having some calming music in the background can be a really great way to channel energy and help bring them to a more self-regulated state too. Great point, Ashley. I had a student who did that as well. Awesome. Yeah, student choice is huge, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Okay, this is uh, last call for questions, but if you if you think of one post-webinar, you can always shoot us an email, a note, and we can think about that question and include it in the blog post. So um, I'm going to stop sharing. So everybody can say their farewells this evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. We hope to see you at the next uh, webinar. And if you implement any of these strategies, take a photo, share it with us. We, we would be happy to share you implementing one of the adaptations or lessons or a musical experience um, in your own classroom or in your own home. So uh, thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you again soon.